Hey, how's it going everyone? And welcome to my God of War Ragnarok 100% collectibles guide for Vanaheim. If you're following this series, you should have already done Svartalfheim and the Alfheim. If you haven't seen those yet, you can go and find them in the description. They'll be linked around for you if you want to go and check those out. Although if you're doing them in order, you would have done those ones already. So this guide is going to show you how to get all of the legendary chests, all the Nornia chests, all of the relics, all the artifacts, all the favors, and all of the little things that count towards 100% and getting the platinum trophy. So I really hope th these guides have been helping you out. I will be putting together a guide soon that shows how to get every collectible in the game, uh, but I thought I'd break these down realm by realm just so that uh, it's a little bit easier to digest if you're looking to do individual areas or if you're stuck. If you're looking for certain collectibles, just check out the timestamps in the description. You should be able to find details on each collectible and where they are in this video. So yeah, thanks for tuning in. Let's get this going. Okay, so the first area we're going to do in Vanaheim is the Southern Wilds. That's where the Mystic Gateway is if you want to come to here. So first off, we're going to do a hell tear. If you've been doing uh, the other guides that I've put out or following those, you should have a few of these done already. I think there's six in total. I'm pretty sure you do two or three of these just with the main storyline. Alright, so yeah, five in total now. I'm pretty sure at this point the numbers should line up when it comes to what I'm doing versus what you're doing. But as I release these videos, I may put them in a certain order so that you end up getting everything um, in the most efficient way. So for the last video or two, when I'm done putting these out, those numbers may not entirely line up. Uh, but it's for the best to get in everything unlocked without having to double back too much between realms. All right, so the first Raven in Vanaheim floating around the river right there. He's always taken me a couple of throws to get. There we go. Right, so I think we've got around half of those now or something. When I'm watching this back in my editing software, I have to lower the quality just so it plays back smoothly. Um, so I can't see the numbers too accurately, but... I have double-checked all of these and made sure that everything is there. So you're not missing anything if you follow all of these guides. Although in total, there should be about seven or eight hours of footage to watch in order to get all of these collectibles, which is a hell of a lot of co uh, collectibles. All right, so we're going to get the um, first legendary chest, which is a light runic attack, Wrath of the Frost Ancients for the axe. Yeah, these numbers as well at the bottom of the screen also just correlate to each of the realms. I've probably mentioned this in my other videos, but I'm just going to compile these videos into one and uh, the numbers at the bottom will just correlate to what's in the realm. For some reason, this door was glitched and it said I could open it, even though it was already open. It's kind of weird. Watch out for the explosive plants in these areas. Sometimes they get you being sneaky. You'll have a little fight here when you get here. Take these enemies out and then you'll need to come over here and sneak through this opening. I do not know. I choose to help. After that, you will see. Yeah, and there's that legendary chest. You can imagine the amount of work that goes into these videos because I have to record everything, which takes long enough in itself. And then I have to edit everything, which also takes a huge amount of time. I also have to take note of where everything is in the video so that you can follow the video accurately. And then I have to render it, which also takes a bunch of time. And then I have to upload it. There's so much time goes into making these videos, especially when the game is as big as God of War Ragnarok. Usually when I'm doing collectibles for a game, it'll take, I mean, a short amount of time. It doesn't take too long to play for a game to get collectibles, but when a game is as big as this, this is like doing five or six games. Each realm is kind of like doing a game, which is crazy. Although this is the biggest realm when it comes to collectibles. And that's because you have the secret area with all the dragons in it and stuff, including the original Vanaheim that you come to, along with the storyline. All right, so we've got a Nornia chest next, which is over this way. Again, watch out for those plants. I could have broken this realm up into two parts, to be honest, but uh, I wanted to keep it realm to realm. There is one video that I'm going to put out that will cover around three realms, but that's because... 
Jotunheim, I think it's Niflheim, and uh, Helheim are really, really small, and I didn't want to release videos that were like five minutes long. So I just compiled those ones into one video. Svartalfheim, Alfheim, Vanaheim, and Midgard are the four areas that have a ton of collectibles, so they're the ones that kind of need breaking up. Muspelheim also has quite a few. That's only really long because of the challenges that you have to do there, though. But I'll be releasing, I think, six videos in total. And that'll cover all of the realms. Next up after this video will be Midgard. Quite a few collectibles there, too. Although, like I said, this is by far the longest one. I think this video is around 2 hours and 40 or something like that. Which is a lot of collectibles. And in comparison, when I'm making a collectible guide for a game, the video will end up being about an hour long or something like that. So, if just for one realm, it takes two hours and 40 to show all of the collectibles, you can tell just how long this game is, how big it is. An absolute ton of content in this game. Alright, so we're working on getting this Nornia chest. These switches can be tricky to find sometimes, but that's all three. Let's go ahead and crank open the chest. If you're struggling to find a certain collectible, have a look in the description and also look on your map and see what area you're missing stuff in. One thing to note is the, the big trophy on this game is the collector trophy. And I think for that one, you've got to get all the relics and hilts or something like that. And a lot of the sneaky hilts and relics aren't included in the collectibles list, which can be kind of frustrating. But following this guide will get you that trophy. The only thing I haven't included in these guides are these red chests, and they don't count as collectibles. But also anything you'll get throughout just completing the game, I don't include either. There's so many sneaky collectibles that, they, that just aren't listed, and you have to do certain things to get. But when I get to those, I'll walk you through them. I have included anything that is needed for trophies in this guide. If you follow this guide completely and you've beaten the storyline, you'll get the platinum just from following this guide. Alright, so we're on to Freya's camp now. We're getting the law scroll, which is in this area. It's kind of just in the camp. This one is called Freya's Lament. Yeah, also add in the description for everything to make sure if you're missing a certain thing, you'll know where to come and get it. Do my best to add as much detail as possible to the guide. All right, quick look at the map, as always. Yeah, and that's kind of why I've added the map to every collectible, or more or less every collectible, just in case somebody is trying to find a particular collectible, they can just click on it and I'll show the map in between so they know where they're going, rather than just moving collectible to collectible. It's kind of the format I like to keep it on these big games. I feel like that's easy for me to follow, so that's how I like to do it. All right, so we're hopping across this gap, and we'll need to break open this rock face heel with the spear. Then we can get to this legendary chest. Sorted. I think in total there are around 500 collectibles we pick up for this game. Which is a ton. It's a lot if a game has 100, but 500, man. These games are big, and so was the previous one. I'm pretty sure the previous game had something like 300 and something collectibles. So this one's actually bigger, even though it kind of doesn't feel like it is. It doesn't feel like it's as big as the previous game. Right. So, now that we're here, we're going to go and get this Remnants of Asgard, which is just to the left when you reach the boat. And if you come towards this chest at the back, if you haven't opened it yet, if you open it, this will trigger the fight. But it should also work if you just come and stand by it. And here we go. Let's beat these guys up. And that'll get the Remnants of Asgard completed for you. Another camp. And there we go. Not as much dialogue now that we've got a little bit further into the game. I think the NPCs, or Mamiya and Freya and Kratos, are kind of running out of things to say to each other. I guess that just goes to show how much time we've spent roaming around for collectibles. Alright, so hopping in the boat and going left. 
Still in Freya's camp, or this still counts towards Freya's camp. Things can get a little bit confusing in these areas. Like, there are collectibles on this island, but they don't count towards um, the area that we were just doing. So I'm going to leave collectibles like that until they count towards the area that we're doing. And you'll probably see me walk past a couple of collectibles in certain areas, and that's just because I'm keeping them area to area so it doesn't get confusing and you can just skip to a certain area and follow it through and get all the collectibles in that area. And that's just because some like there's ravens that are along the river here and they count towards the river delta, even though we're right next to them. I'll wait until we are in the right or we're working on the right area in order to get them done. If we're moving through an area and we don't need to come back to it to save doubling back, sometimes I'll work it out and display it so that we uh, make it a little bit more efficient. But there are some sections where you'll have to double back on yourself and stuff like that. Hopefully that's not too much of a bother, but I did my best to just keep this guide as easy to follow as possible without having to switch the area as much as possible. All right, so... Raven number two. Heading over this way now. We've had to quick, uh, take a quick shortcut through the camp. And the raven is just over here, sitting on this tree. Sorted. All right. So that's Freya's camp done with. Moving on to the eastern berry woods. And I think there's one collectible in this area that's a little bit confusing if you've already beaten the storyline. I will talk about it when we get to it. And it's because once you beat Heimdall in the storyline, and you kind of do the escape from Vanaheim with everybody when Freya gives you the boat, there's an area that gets cut off. You can still get back to it, but you have to take a really weird route to get there. But I'll mention that when we get to it. Also, it's not a collectible, I think, that appears on the collectible list on the map. But again, I've done my best to include all of that and make sure that it's there. So, we've got the remnants of Asgard that's in this area. Uh, I think this one may not count towards the area that we're working on right now. We've got to do one more collectible for Freya's camp. Um, but it's it involves coming through here, and this is kind of what I was talking about before. I can't really avoid doing this fight while I'm passing through this area because the enemies will just attack me. It's almost impressive. But even though the collectible we're about to get counts for Freya's camp, I think, it's uh, kind of in this area. You have to come up this way and climb along to get it. But we were walking past a couple of collectibles and I didn't want to come all the way here and then have to double back to get those collectibles. So... Just trying to keep it as efficient as possible. But yeah, the legendary chest over there that's up there counts towards Freya's camp, which is kind of strange considering literally the remnants of Asgard next to it counts as uh, Eastern Berry Woods. But that's fine. All right. So this will give you the Leviathan's Rule, which is a heavy runic attack for the axe. This is why also I make those timestamps, just because if you're looking for all the collectibles for Freya's camp, you can skip to that if you want to make things nice and easy. Okay, so back to the Eastern Berry Woods then. We're doing the third raven. Let's go ahead and hop down here. And got a little health stone there if you want it. And we're going to go through the tree here, through the little crawl space. Really happy that I've managed to get all of this stuff done now. I don't have any more recording or editing to do for this game. I've just got to come back and commentate everything. It's taken me so much time to get all this stuff done. I've also had a bunch of problems recently with my setup. I bought a new 4K capture card and it's given me a bunch of trouble getting it set up. I'm having little glitches with it. And certain things have messed up on recording, so I've had to come back and record some stuff. And then I managed to have a problem with my microphone as well, so I've just had to sort that out over the last couple of days. Finally managed to get it done, though. Everything should be on point from here on out. Okay, so there's the Raven. Let's go and get this lore scroll. This one's for the Aesir Promise. Still in the Eastern Berry Woods. 
Okay, there it is right there. It's really difficult when playing through the game to not accidentally pick any of this stuff up. I really have to be careful when I'm just working through the storyline to not accidentally pick up a collectible, especially ones like that. So next up, we've got a Nordia chest, and you're going to need to burn away the brambles to get to that switch. But yeah, there's one of the switches. The one of them is just above the chest right there. And the other one is right there, just across the river. I'll open up the chest for you. There are actually more Nornia chests in the game than there are upgrades that you need. And there's not a achievement or trophy, I keep saying achievement, there's not a trophy that's tied to getting all of the Nornia chests, but there is a trophy that's tied to fully upgrading Kratos, like his health bar and his rage bar. But you don't need to get all of the Nornia chests for that, so there's a couple towards the end that you don't actually need to get. I really think they should have a trophy just for 100% in each realm. I don't think it would have hurt to have that, because you near enough have to do that anyway. They've kind of worked it out so that you have to just... I think the Collector Trophy is the one that pretty much makes you have to go close to the 100% in the game. Still in the Eastern Berry Woods then, going for the second rune, Reed. This one reads as Verdant. And this is also where we meet the Celestial Wolves in the storyline. Coming through here, one thing we will have to do in this area at some point is change the time of day. And that can kind of make these areas a little bit confusing. But it's no bother. So we're going to have to use the axe heal to freeze up these poison plants. Make sure you're through the little clouds you can see. Pull the axe back and then freeze up this one. You can also use Freya's arrows to keep the uh, plant frozen whilst uh, the axe is in it. And then pull the axe back. So you can see how far back you've got to come to get to some of these collectibles. But there it is. Sorted. Mm. Fitting. All right. Sweet. <clears throat> so now we're working through the abandoned village. We're going to get another raven. And in the storyline, when you fight Heimdall, just before you get there, there's a boss that kind of looks like it's one of those wolf things. Not sure what it's called, but when you go to fight it, fight it, Freya says something along the lines of, that's the alpha, it's a tough fight. And if you've beaten that guy, pat yourself on the back, because you don't have to backtrack a bunch to get to one of the collectibles. But if you haven't, you're going to have to backtrack all the way back there, and I'll do my best to show it when we come to it. But yeah, you can't take the normal way to get back to it. You're going to have to take a really weird, long, stupid way to get there. But not really much we can do about it. We're just going to have to go there. All right, so next up we've got a rune reed. We're going to need to jump across our spear there. And we need to do some climbing. This is the area you'll be in when you're getting the, the moon back to give to the wolves. Right, let's climb up. Really have enjoyed this game, though. Lots and lots of fun. I love how long it takes to actually do everything in this game. And there are still secrets that I haven't seen myself yet. Like a couple of secret little boss fights and stuff. But they don't count towards any trophies. I have platinum the game now, but... I feel like the, the previous game's platinum was harder to do. Because I'm pretty sure for that game you had to pretty much open every chest, even the red chests, which is insane. There was so, so many of those red chests, but they saw fit to not include that in this game. Getting rid of these poison plants then, and keep moving along this way. You're going to have some enemies here to beat, a couple of drog. Let's get rid of them. Alright, so into the abandoned village, we're going to go and get this third rune reed, which you can kind of see in the distance over there. May Freya never waver. 
The other half is missing. May she protect us. All right, Freya. Relax. All right. Legendary chest number four, then. This gives you the Shatter Star Shield. I'm pretty sure this will count towards the Collecting All Shields trophy that's in the game. One thing you will have to do is buy the shields from the shop. And also, whatever relics you unlock, you'll also have to buy those to get your trophy. So, if for some reason maybe you're re-watching videos because you haven't got your trophies and you're wondering why, make sure you visit the shop. I will mention that when we reach the end of the guides. We've collected everything. There's a few relics and a couple of shields that you have to buy from the shop in order to get the trophies to unlock. <clears throat> Alright. So freeze up these poison plants. The legendary chest is just down here. That's the fourth one that we're going to get in Vanaheim. Sorted. A little look at the map. Alright. Heading up the ledge and down this rope. And we're going to move towards getting Law Scroll number three, which is called Chores. Still in the abandoned village. We are working through these areas. Okay. So... That isn't the scroll, just a little bit of hack silver if you want it. But down here, just behind this sort of table thing, all these, these boxes, is the law scroll. Nice. Alright, so next up, we've got a favor, which is the draug hole. I'm not sure, I forget what the favor's called here, but you need to get these across different realms. Beat the draug hole to get the completion. Blame the gods for the death of a family. And has been haphazardly wreaking a vengeance on anything within arm's reach. Even death didn't stop her. I know. Right. So next up we've got the legendary chest number five. This gives the Rond of Restoration, which is for the shield. It's just here. Not too far from the drag hole. Okay, so, quick look at the map. Let's kick this down here. Head down here. And you'll have a little fight when you get down here. Deal with the enemies. And then we're going to come up these stairs that we were next to when we entered this area. And hop down the spear. Across the river. And we need to climb up with the blades in this area. Alright. I cannot wait to have all of these videos done. Just because, like I mentioned in a previous video, I've recently bought a 4K capture card. And the size of the files this thing records are absolutely insane. So I am running dangerously low on space on my computer at the moment. So much is taken up by this game, but there's always a little bit of fear when you're recording these games about deleting stuff until you get everything done. Like if you delete files before you've made the videos because you've got certain things that you need and you accidentally delete something you needed for a video, it can be very frustrating. So I tend to keep video files until I've got the videos released just in case something goes wrong. All right, so right here we need to use the flaming pot thing to light the little fires that unlock the chest. There's two of them done. And you need to use this to jump across to get the Nornia chest. You can't go this way, though. I was trying to see if you can go that way, but you need to go back around. So let's go ahead and do that. That should be enough for us to get back across. Then we need to move it again. There we go. Sorted. Alright, so there's the last one. Don't use the axe like I did, you need to use the blades. 
And there's the chest just behind you. Sweet. So the armor I'm using increases Kratos' vitality, which gives you extra health, basically. If you get all the upgrades and you're using this armor, the amount of health you have is actually insane. There's also a couple of amulets you get that restore health over time. It kind of makes Kratos' health really, really strong, but it's entirely up to you what you use. I kind of like how this game has sort of a small RPG element where you can give Kratos a kind of build in regards to his armor, so you can make his strength higher or you can make his defense higher if you want to. Depends on exactly what you want. Kind of decent. I do like that element of the game. It just, I mean, a lot of the the armor choices, though, I guess come down to what you um, prefer when it comes to just the aesthetic of the armor. Because no matter which armor you have, if you have it fully upgraded, you're going to be relatively powerful. All right, so to move this... We need to go down, because at the moment it's blocked by this pillar. So we need to go down and go around so that we can break the pillar. So we need to jump under this tree branch into this opening here and down to the side. And yeah, you can pull down the pillar right here. Nice and easy. Hop over the ledge. And up we go. So now we can move this thing in order to get across and get the legendary chest. That one's kind of difficult to find if you don't know where to look. It's not immediately obvious how you've got to move this thing. So we're going to need to move it again. A couple of times. Did that one a little too quick. There we go. Let's hop across. Sorted. Easy. That one's a light runic attack. Which is the Helios Flame for the blades. I feel like there's a lot more light runic attacks than there are heavy ones. Or at least the light ones are much easier to find than the heavy ones. Okay, so this is that collectible that I was talking about. This is a fight with that kind of wolf enemy. And you'll have beaten one of these along the main storyline. One of these enemies. But beating two of them gives you the Nars Cup. So I showed the map of where it was right there, but if you can't get back to him, this is the route you're going to have to take. So we've come back over to this Mystic Gateway, which I believe is the, I think it's the River Delta. It's either the River Delta or the Freya's Camp. I did show it on the screen for a second there. But we need to come this way to get back. You can't go from where we were just a second ago doing that last collectible. If you haven't beaten the game, you should be able to walk through and get to him there. But if you have beaten the game like me, and I'm guessing most of you probably have if you're watching this video, you're going to have to <clears throat> take this route. And this is a different path than the one we were just on. But it counts towards the abandoned village completion, I think. Or it is in that area. So in order to get that, I'm going to show you how to get there. You're going to have to do a little bit of coming back for the next collectibles. Although, you may have already beaten that enemy. If you if you know you've already beaten that enemy, you can skip doing this and just move on to the next collectible. But uh, if you want to double check, this is the route you're going to have to take. And because it's on a different path, I thought I'd just show the whole thing so there's no confusion of where you've got to go and how to get to him. So, we're going to come all the way back here. This is the path you have to take when you first come to this area with Freya to save her brother. And you can come back this way, but the original way, you cannot take. So, this is just how we're going to have to get there, unfortunately. Alright, kill these enemies. And you're going to need to make sure it's daytime to be able to climb up here. If it's not daytime, you won't be able to jump, make that jump. And the Celestial Altar is just to the right of that area if you need to get to it. So, this also will bring you to a favor that's called the scent of survival i believe there's a law marker here if you want to get that right now feel free we will be coming back to get that in a little while so you can just keep following the video if you want to or you can grab that right now if you want to entirely up to you i will show the route to get back here and get it again i could have grabbed it right there but because this collectible counts towards the area we were in i just wanted to add this to the video just to make sure i was being accurate as how to 
to get to this. It's an absolute mission to get back here, but you may, may also get a little bit of completion to the favor, the scent of survival, as you run past that law marker, because that's where you need to go in order to continue with that favor. Um, but upon re-recording this little route back to where we've got to go to, uh, I'd already done it, so you won't see me get the completion right there. But you might, and that's fine. We're going to, you know, do all of that stuff a little bit later in this video. So don't worry. It's all going to get covered, all going to get shown. But this is the area just before you fight Heimdall in the storyline. And this guy is sat right here. And you need to beat him. And you'll get a collectible called, uh, I think it's Nars Cup or something like that. <clears throat> And, yeah, that counts towards one of the trophies. So you're going to have to come all this way to get that. If you know you've beaten that guy, he is just a one-time enemy. He doesn't show up if you've already beaten him. And you'll also... You have to beat, I think, two of those guys in order to get that pickup. And you will have beaten one of those guys along the main storyline. So I think we fight another one as well while we're questing through this area. So, yeah, you will get to the point where you get that pickup. All right, then. So now we've come to here... And we're going to go and do the area Pilgrim's Landing. If you're confused as to where we are, just dial the video back. Have a look at the map. I did just show the Mystic Gate where we came to. Um, but I didn't want to show my entire route back to this area because that's another like two or three minutes. Near the falls. Your wedding site. Now why do you want to be going back there? To be free of the bonds of my marriage. And to Asgard. I think you severed that a long time ago. Not completely. Not enough. Guide us. Right. So heading along the River Delta here to get to Pilgrim's Landing. The River Delta has its own set of collectibles. And we're going to do that eventually. Settled this river many ages ago. Thousands traveled it on pilgrimage to the shrine of worship. But then the Aesir came. All right. Here we are then. Let's go ahead and get this Berserker gravestone. Have to kill these enemies first. All right. Beat this guy. Get that done. This king spoke up. He's not really a king. Just called himself one because he killed the previous king. Someone you knew. Baldis. A kind man. A trusting man. Okay, so moving on to get this law marker then. We need to set fire to the bushes there in order to get that first uh, little chain down. Then we can do the second one. Listening to these things, sing is really annoying. But yeah, kill the enemies here and then you can get to the law marker nice and easy. Good thing you learned the runes, brother. Dead on arrival. Easy. All right, so let's go ahead and break that first chain right there. And now we need to use the blades on this. This might take you a second or two to get sorted. You need to set it free first. And then once you've done that, you'll need to use the blades on it and swing it to the right. And that will set one of the things on fire that's on it. And then you'll need to go ahead... If you hit it with a shock arrow, it will stop it from moving, by the way. It makes things nice and easy, but you'll need to light the other side. So just put a runic arrow in the middle of it and make it bigger, and that way you'll light both, swing it to the left, and then get Freya to shoot the thing that gets lit, and that will burn away the bushes, and then you can break the chain. Get the legendary chest. Just down to the left of this legendary chest is a raven. You can kind of see it there. We'll be coming back to get that in a little while. It counts towards the River Delta and not Pilgrim's Landing. But if you want to get it right now, there's no harm in it. 
it's up to you. I thought I'd mention it, but we're going to have to double back because it is included with the River Delta section of this guide. Entirely up to you if you get it now or then. All right, so beat the enemies, and then we've got a favor. Probably the easiest favor in the game, to be honest. It's coming towards this person. What is wrong? Please, leave me to my prayer. All right. So she demands a cure. She is dead. She is yeah. trapped here, ignorant of her own death. If we bring her what she needs, she'll move on. You are certain. I'm Did you recognize her? The sickly spirit. No. Oh, here we go. There was a time I could call the face of every one of my people. Sometimes I wonder if God's lived too long. I once felt the same. That's everything I need. Let's return to the sick spirit. You would cure the dead. I promised I would take care of my people. You do not even remember her. Nor she you. And? Let us return to the spirit. <laughs> oh, God. The one thing that's a bit weird about this game is Kratos is actually being nice some of the time. Doesn't fit his character too well. I'm guessing as well. Yeah. Oh no! Please don't continue. Um, I'm guessing as well that the next game they're going to make in this sort of series is going to be about Atreus, and Kratos isn't really going to be in it. Atreus is going to be the main protagonist of that game. I'm not sure if they'll even make any more games with Kratos, to be honest, because he's, I guess, an old man now. But I, I do kind of like the way they ended this game. If you've paid attention, they've kind of made it so that. Kratos is like the big boy god now. Like you had Zeus before and Odin. Oh, here we go. I'm trying to explain something and Freya pipes up. Calm down, Freya. Calm down. Yeah, we're doing the uh, Noah Toon's Garden now. I have to defeat the enemies that are here. But yeah, it kind of plays into something that Odin says where he says, has anyone ever loved you? Has anyone even prayed to you? Here we go. Chit chat. Astrid, the, my, you, I, to, I will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? The earth is a reflection of those who tend it. So long as the land is plagued, her soul will be as well. We have to destroy the killers. They're poisoning Astrid's garden. Life returns to the garden. Good. So we need to destroy the poison pots here. Let's go ahead and get rid of them. It off could help. Ah, maybe you can hit it from a different angle. Oh, really? Thanks. Thanks for letting me know. I appreciate it. Let's go up. And can you yeah, you can while you're up there? break the chain. That's kind of the only reason we came up here. There is a law marker up here that we're going to get in a minute as well. If you want to get it now, that's completely fine. But we're working on this favor. So drop down, open the gate. And hello, Freya. All right. All right. Use the axe, break that. And there is a way to get to that flaming pot in there. There it is. There's the break in the wall that you need. Use the spear, get that smashed. And there we go. That's all three. Uh, yeah. Stupid spirit. Your garden grows again. Yeah, yeah. How did you? Frickin' gardener Kratos. You anyway, what was, what was I saying? A temporary one. The garden will die again. All things do. That is no reason not to try. God damn it! Right, there's the law marker, just behind us. Another sleeping troll, courtesy of the dwarves. Yeah, you'll get a. Uh, Eventually, we do get, I think you get it in Midgard, there's an item you get and you can come and wake up these trolls and if you beat them you get like a set of armor, but it doesn't count towards a collectible or trophies or anything like that. So break the seal on this and you can get a piece of Lunda's broken armor. And this is needed for a trophy. An armor piece bearing Lunda's brand. 
Shame is broken. Nice. There's three of those to get in total in uh, Vanaheim. Let's go and get this next artifact, which is over in a corner this way, I think. Yeah, there it is. So many collectibles. All right, and then that law marker we looked at a minute ago, which is on top of this building. You could have grabbed this a minute ago, but I told you we'd come back to it. I wasn't lying to you. Yeah, we can also destroy the thing to our left here. And that'll get rid of some of the annoying flowers that are in this area. Right there. Sorted. There's some hacks over there if you want it. And down we go again. And... There's a sneaky red chest here if you want to get it. I don't think this has anything important, but, you know. It's there if you want to open it up. So next up we've got a treasure map that is in this area. And it's in the back corner. Just over to the right of this building, I think. I'm pretty sure I had to edit this one in. She would not have left it behind. There it is. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I picked that one up by mistake and had to edit that one in. So next up, we've got a legendary chest that we've got to get to. And we need to burn away these bushes first. And this is a sneaky way to get this done. This actually isn't the real proper way to get this done. But if you put a couple of runic arrows there and make them bigger and then put one here... You can connect these together and burn away the bushes. You're actually supposed to go over to the left. You'll see me head there in a bit to get the Yggdrasil Rift that's in this area. But uh, that's a sneaky way to just do it from here so that you don't have to run all the way around. We can head back and get so if you're following this guide maybe two years down the line or something like that. And what I did there just doesn't work. I can show you a way... Uh, to get it a little later in this video. So don't worry too much if it's... I don't know, maybe it, it will get patched or something. I don't think it will. Um, you can just use the runic arrows to get it through that gate. But you're actually supposed to go around and climb up to a different area to get that. Uh, I'll show that a little later in this video, though, if for some reason you can't get that to work. So don't worry too much. So you'll have some enemies there that you need to deal with. Get rid of them. And let's go to the Cliffside Ruins. So yeah, if you're struggling to get that one, have a look at the timestamps and look for the Yggdrasil Rifts. Have a look at the Yggdrasil Rifts. Eventually you'll come to one that's just next to uh, the area and I'll mention how to burn away those bushes and stuff the proper way. Although you shouldn't have a problem doing it with the runic arrows. I doubt they'll patch that out. All right, so head into the cliffside ruins and this is one of the areas where about three or four different areas intersect with each other. And there are collectibles here that you'll probably see me run in past that don't count towards uh, completion of this area. So I'll do my best to keep it all in order and nice and easy to follow. So right here we've got this Nornia chest. And we need to burn away these bushes. I need to use those runic arrows to get this done. These can be a little bit tricky at times, man. Let's hop over. Burn away the bushes and then we can get to the switch. Watch out for the nightmares that spawn when you jump across. Impressive. Okay. So. Yeah, I had to do this a couple of times to get this done. Let's see the correct solution. There we go. Let's go and see if that does it. Uh, looks like the ticket. Nice. nice. Alright, so now we can use the axe. Sorted. Alright, there's two more. And one of them is just below this chain, but you're gonna need to climb up. We can't. Not with those vines in the way. Yeah, you're gonna need to climb up in order to get to that one, so that way up is over here. You might want to talk to that spirit while you're here as well. We're going to go and complete her favor, but go and chat to her before you climb up here. Do yourself a favor and just quickly go and talk to her and take that quest on. We're going to go and complete her quest in a minute, but just talk to her before you come up here. She's kind of just next to where we are. 
All right, there's the Nornia chest. I think we can burn those vines from here. All right, so there we go. Let's keep working on this Nornia chest. It takes forever to get done. So we're going to need to come over to this little island. Again, there's like two or three collectibles on this island, but we're not going to get them just yet. They don't count towards this area. So we're going to come back and get those when we're working through that area. I know it can get a little bit confusing, but it's all just to do with keeping the areas nice and tidy. Unless we absolutely have to like work our way through an area to prevent a lot of doubling back. I'll go ahead and include an area if we're running through it. We're about to come across something like that in a minute. Like I said, this is an area where four or five of the different areas intersect, so it's a little bit confusing. All right. There's the Nornia chest that's in this area. Okay, so from here then, we're going to go over to the Veiled Passage. And this is one of those areas that we have to work through in order to get progress in this area. Again, if you can, go and speak to that spirit that's down there. She's sort of below me right now. Um, and you're going to have to go down to climb this chain in a minute. So you've got plenty of opportunity to talk to her. Just take the favor on before you climb up the chain. Because we're going to go and complete her favor. I'm pretty sure that you don't have to talk to her. Like, we can go and do her favor. And then come back and just talk to her. And it'll pretty much complete straight away. You don't actually have to do anything. But just to be on the safe side, just have a chat with her now. She's right there to my left. Just have a chat with her. And then you can get her quest out of the way nice and easy. We're about to basically go and unlock the rest of this area. But we need to go through the Veiled Passage. Right, so once you're up here, use this rune plate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get Freya to speak the word. And that'll unlock the area. So yeah, in order to unlock the rest of the cliffside ruins, we need to go and head through the Veiled Passage, which has collectibles of its own. And saving us going all the way through there, coming back, doing the rest of this area, then going all the way back around there and doing that. I've just edited it so that you can... Everyone just wants to talk whenever I'm trying to explain something. Yeah, nobody cares. No, nobody cares. Just make sure you've spoken to that spirit before you leave. I didn't hear, but I think that if you just go and do what I'm about to do, come back and talk to her, you'll just auto-complete the thing. But just to be on the safe side, just talk to her. You're sure you want to continue? Confronting the past comes with a price. It must be done. I've lived with this pain far too long. If you can believe it. We were oh. happy once. For a time foolishly believed the peace would last perhaps that was my mistake all i wanted was to protect my family yeah 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 I all right be quiet everybody so let's go to this little place here and you can get lunda's orb from this area if you haven't uh if you can't pick this up You'll need to talk to Lunda first, but the odds are you've already talked to her because it's along the main storyline. It's like a side quest. This is where you get her orb for her side quest. If for some reason you can't pick that up, you might need to go and talk to her first. All right, let's throw this rock right there after putting a runic arrow on it, and that'll burn away the branches. And now we need to set up runic arrows so that we can hit all three of these. No, managed to mess that up. Waiting for the arrows to recharge. Probably should have edited this a little bit better, but that's fine. We'll get that solution, don't worry. Haven't let you down yet, hopefully. Alright. Grab the bomb, chuck it at the runes, and uh, you should get all of these things detonated That's it. and then you need to use the bomb again just to break this there we go that's how you get the Nornia chest so yeah um 
Lunda's quest, you have to talk to her, but when you first meet her, she asks you to go and do that, and you've probably already taken that quest on. If for some reason that orb that I picked up isn't there for you, you might need to quickly go to a shop and talk to Lunda and come back here to get it. A very simple favor, though it's not really a difficult one to track. All right, so next up, we're going to go and get Lunda's Broken Curus. You can see that the orb was still there on the right for me because this section was heavily edited to make sure everything was included. But yeah, don't worry. If you've picked that up, you don't need to pick it up twice. All right. So opening up this chest will give you the Curus. Another piece of her broken armor. Like we've got all of Lunda's armor. Perhaps we should return these pieces and see if she can repair them. Yeah, there's one more piece for us to actually pick up. Uh, but like I said, this whole section was heavily edited to make it easier to follow, just because I didn't want to have to come through this area twice. Essentially, the only reason we're coming through here at the moment is to unlock uh, the rest of the cliffside ruins. Bear in mind, when you come through here, you're going to have enemies to fight. I probably don't have them. Uh, but there will be enemies here for you to fight. There's a lore marker just up top. But they're just simple, normal little grunt enemies. Get that lore marker. Like I said, just be ready to fight enemies in this area. Raven right above you. Easy. Alright, moving on. And we're going to get another artifact in this area. Look out for the plants when you're running through here. Those things can be really annoying. Okay, you might have to smash this wood to get to this artifact as well. There might be like a little wood barricade block in that. It was already broken for me. But there's the artifact. Sorted. Alright. So we've got another lore marker, but we're going to need to head through this entire area to get to it. There's a couple of these enemies. So these are the enemies you have to fight in order to beat that spirit's favor that I mentioned earlier. I'm pretty sure even if you don't talk to her before you come here, you still have to beat these enemies. So if you don't talk to her and then you come here, beat the enemies, and then go back and talk to her about the favor, it'll just auto-complete. Um, but that's why I kind of just told you to pick the favor up as you were running past. Just in case it doesn't work, although I'm 99% sure that it'll work. Alright. More enemies. I was kind of stupid there and just brought my axe straight back. Here we go. Sweet. Okay. Then we can they climb down this chain. I would have thought them wiser than to And there's the law marker. Magic. They were desperate. And now they are dead. Learn anything? Sorted. Alright. So now that we've done that, we can also get down here to this legendary chest. This is probably one of the hardest legendary chests to get to, if you ask me. You need to break that pot right there, and below this sort of stuff that you need to break is um, another pot. And I'll show it to you quickly before we break it. This one actually took me a little while to figure out how to do. When I first came across this on my casual playthrough, I really struggled to open this. Right, defeat these enemies. Get them out of the way. These nightmares are an actual nightmare. Kind of just stupid little grunt enemies. Right, let's get rid of them. So yeah, if you look down through the gate, you can see the explosive pot. And I feel like it would make sense to be able to throw a spear through there. You might be able to go to the opposite um, island and throw the spear and hit it, but... I think the way they intended for you to get this was to use the runic arrows right here and blow the pot up by connecting them all. And there you go. And that's how you get to the chest. 
I think for me that was the trickiest one to figure out anyway. There's not many that are too tough, but that one was pretty annoying. All right. What did you find? Coming up here, then we can get the last piece of Lunda's broken armor. Yeah, so the reason I edited this whole section is coming through here just opens up the cliffside ruins, and as you can imagine, coming through here to just to unlock the cliffside ruins, and then coming down and finishing it, and then going all the way around to the Veil Passage again would just be kind of stupid. Yeah, so I chatted to her, basically talked to her twice, and then completed the favor. That's why I told you to pick the favor up before we left. And going through the Veiled Passage, beating those enemies. We'll just complete that favor when you come back. Nice and easy. All right, so now we still need to go back on ourselves around here to go to the Goddess Falls to get Law Marker number six. And also a bunch of other collectibles. So all the way down here. And you may have noticed a little beach that we floated past earlier. And we're going to go ahead and dock. Kill these enemies. And up we go. Do you know why I left that night, Mimir? Only a hunch. He showed me who he really was. Odin asked me to cast a protection spell on him. The one I used on my son. But the way it drove our boy mad, I refused. He was furious. Throwing every object he could find. Destroyed the room. There was only coldness after that. All right. So there's that law marker. We're going to come this way, hop across the gap. And we need to use the runic arrows to get through here. Saw it. There's the raven. Nice and easy. A lot of these collectibles aren't too difficult to find. A lot of the time it's just the routes to get to them that can be difficult to do. Definitely frustrating. Alright, all the way up. So we're about an hour deep into this video now. Only another hour and 40 minutes to go. Nice and short videos, yeah. Alright, there's the buried treasure that's in this area for the treasure map under the rainbow if you're following this section and you don't know where the map is take a look at the timestamps in the description i'll link the map next to the solution so you can go back and find it nice and easy gotta put that detail into these videos man all right so to light this first fire we're gonna need to use these platforms along with some runic arrows And then I'll get it lit. Put the last one about there. Sword. Easy. There's another one. This one's all about using them runic arrows. Simple, simple. And last but not least is over here somewhere, I believe. Just use the rocks that are on this waterfall to get it sorted. There you go. Beautiful. Alright, so next up we've got another Nornia chest. Oh, is that the same one actually? No, it's the same one. We're going to a law marker now. Yeah, law, law marker number seven, which is called the Feast. 
I think we're going into the next area now, the Vanir Shrine, yeah. And this is where you can get one of Freya's upgrades. I think this is where you get her other sword. You'll also get a trophy just for completing this area and getting her sword. I never thought I'd come back here. Reavers, of course. So yeah, beat the enemies <coughs> and uh, the lore marker is right there. Anything interesting, brother? A few of these lore markers around the place. Sorted. That treasure map right there, which is the giant's toes. Okay, so law marker number eight. We're going to have to go over here and take down another bridge. Got these flowers to deal with first. These things are a nuisance. Oh, really? Thanks, Freya. That's so useful. Something. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a note of something. Thanks. Appreciate it. So yeah, you're going to have to use the uh, runic arrows once again. And burn all this stuff down. Look out for those flowers. You're going to have to follow the vines in order to burn them away, but... Looks like I didn't do it here. Alright, so coming around to the left, so we can get that other chain. Sorted. Easy does it. Yeah, those flowers are pesky, man. Looks like there's a bunch of them around here. Alright, deal with the little nightmares that are in this area. If you use the blades, you can just grab these guys and pretty much one-shot them every time. Yeah, these flowers are causing me issues. There it is. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Freya. Thanks for the something, by the way. And there's the law marker, just in this area. Good thing you learned the runes, brother. I guess it is. So, next up, uh, we have... I think this might be the first piece of uh, Freya's... Oh, no, it's a little further along. In this area, you've got to pick up a few items for Freya. That's how you complete our quest. I'll beat the enemies here. And... We'll get our artifact, which is just you. Hewley family. One of the first families ripped apart by the war. All right. Legendary chest number 10. It's a light runic attack. Rampage of the Furies. This one's for the blades. Yeah, I think this is the area we can get Freya's first item. And burn away those brambles. And you can throw the spear through there to break the chain. There we go. Let's head back down to go through that open door. Got an enemy waiting in there. I wonder how long he was sitting in there for, mate. It's got to be a miserable existence. Oh, right, there we go. Okay. I know it's tedious looking at the map every time, but... We kind of need to. Just in case people are using the timestamps. Just gives a nice idea of where you are. Alright. Oh, we got more enemies. And this is for the favor that's in this area for Freya. You need to come and get this item. It belonged to you. A symbol of commitment. made every week each more beautiful than the last he stopped when i refused to teach him the old magic all right so i'll use the runic arrows to destroy this bush yeah we can kick this chain down get that kick down just for an easy way back in a little while and then we're going to come over here and use the rune plate Sorted. I can't read that from here. 
Let's head back and I can take a better look. She can't read that from here. Oh, there we go. But I feel nothing. Perhaps what you see cannot be found in a circlet. You may be right. Oh, Kratos is definitely right. All right, so we're going to defeat these enemies that are in this area. Get them beat up, and then we're going to come over here to this doorway that's on our left. And we need to use the runic arrows in these three spots. There we go. Set them on fire. The door is shut. That's it. And in we go. Heading towards rune read number four, which is Traitor. Couple more enemies here to deal with. I think there's one of those Nokens in the tree. You're gonna have to deal with first. I think to get to him, we're going to have to go this way. Yeah, he's up top. Can't kill those enemies until you've defeated the Snowken. These things are annoying, man. Just essentially make everything invincible. All right, so once you've defeated those enemies, come back down. And then you can get the rune reed that was right there that we passed a minute ago. All right. Now that's done, let's head back up. Kind of frustrating that you have to go and defeat the enemies because it won't let you interact with the collectible until you've killed them. All right. So let's get this law marker. Anything illuminating. Nice. All right. So. Let's go and get the second of Freya's items for this quest. Symbol of reconciliation. We drank from the lover's chalice until we could hardly stand. I confided in him that night about wanting an apology from Freya. Yeah, yeah, Freya, yeah, yeah. Alright, let's go and get this next rune plate. The word is complete, but I still can't read it from here. Let's head back down. Alright. Better now? No. The pain only grows. Will I never be free of it? What more no. do I need to do? No, quit your whining, Freya. Alright, all the way down. Odin's dead at this point and you're still complaining. Okay. Let's go ahead. Get her to speak this word. And the lore scroll is on the other side of this bridge. The most difficult battles are fought within, but this battle. You will not fight alone. There we go. Abandoned. Okay. Are you ready? So, inside we go. I kind of like that they changed the mechanic for the chisel doors. It could be a little bit glitchy in the previous game. There it is. My final tie to Asgard. We drove that sword into the pillar. Together. All right. The sword was forged for the ceremony. Yeah, yeah. So after that cutscene, you'll get a trophy. Decent. You'll also get Freya's summon and some armor for her as well. Learn anything? And there's another law marker as well in this room. Okay, so now we're coming back to cover the River Delta. And you may remember where this shop is. You're going to have to come here. There's a Mystic Gateway here. So make your way back here however you see fit. And you can find an artifact just to the right of the, uh, of the Mystic Gateway there. 
you might have picked that one up already, but yeah, it's a long way back to this area. Also, next to where we are is uh, the Giant's Toes Buried Treasure. If you're looking for the map, just check the timestamps in the description. Although we have already covered that a little bit earlier on. If you followed this video, you should be able to pick up that buried treasure. And also, we've got a lore marker just here to the right of the shop. Sorted. Living masterpiece. All right, so now we've got raven number seven. We're going to have to go back a little bit to get to a couple of these ravens. Um, but that's okay. You may have seen these yourself as you're adventuring around doing the other areas, but I wanted to try and keep the River Delta sort of separate, mainly for the time stamps. Like, if I can cover an entire area in one section, it's a lot easier to follow. Um, but like I said, this whole section is sort of enveloped around other sections. So it's kind of weird, but yeah, you have to be in those areas to get the River Delta collectibles. That's why we left it for last, just because you wouldn't be able to access these areas without first doing the Veiled Passage and the Cliffside Ruins. So it just makes sense to do this area as one of the last ones that we do in this part of Vanaheim. When we're done with this area of Vanaheim, though, we're going to have to go to the area that has all the dragons. And that's basically a whole other section in itself. Like another map. And that area is quite tough as well, so make sure you're ranking up your gear so that you can actually fight these enemies. Some of the enemies you'll come across in that area with the dragons are quite tough. I think that was one of the more difficult things about doing that uh, this guide. I mean, the whole time it takes, the editing and all that stuff is one thing, which does take a lot of time. But going ahead and playing through the game without picking up any collectibles or picking up any of the red chests in order to get upgrades was kind of difficult. I didn't know at the time if the red chests counted to completion or not, whereas now I know they don't, but I guess it's uh, good to know. Also, those Celestial Jews, they don't count. Are they Celestial Jews? Or they're from the, the, the drinks from the World Tree. They don't count towards collectibles either but you can get those as we're passing them if you want to like i just did there so we've come back to pilgrim's landing i did mention this raven a little bit earlier so you may have already got this one uh yeah but it's just over there on the side again it's kind of annoying that we were literally just here getting the legendary chest earlier and that collectible counts towards the raven um but yeah there it is also it's it's one of those things if someone was following the timestamps they may not understand how to get to that area on the River Delta because you have to come through and unlock this area. So that's why I've kind of kept it separate and done it after we've done Pilgrim's Landing. All right. So let's go and get artifact number six. I think this may be the last one of this set. And you may remember earlier I was talking about a, uh, a chest that we sort of did a little bit of a... No, I wouldn't say it's a bug. It's just a cheeky way to unlock the gate without her coming around. This is where you would have to come to in order to do it normally. Well, the way the developers intended you to get it, I guess. So that's the last piece of that artifact set. So let's go up here. Watch out for the plant. And you've got a Yggdrasil Rift up here. I think this may be the only one in this area of Vanheim. You're gonna have some enemies that pop out, defeat those enemies. And then you can reach into the rift and get it done. Sorted. Alright, so... There's also a red chest across this gap. And over by that red chest, if you see the bush on my right, the red bush that you can burn away, you would usually use the runic arrows to burn away the um, the bushes there, and then you can break the chain from that side, and then you can go around and get into that area. That's what I was talking about a little bit earlier. 
Right, so we've come back a little bit over here and we need to go to the Western Barry Woods now. We did go through this area to get to that wolf boss fight earlier on. Um, I could have included that wolf fight here, but I thought it best not to because we don't actually need to go that far into the area. And uh, also the collectible we were doing counted towards the Eastern Berry Woods. It also depends on whether you've completed the game or not as to if you can get to that collectible from that side. But, you know, we've dealt with it. Hopefully you can go ahead and get that sorted. Doesn't hurt sometimes just to take a little bit of extra time to show a route that you guys may need to go to get to something and I just kind of want to be thorough. A couple of enemies here, these annoying little wisps. We're essentially following along that area though that we went through before and that marker that I told you guys that you can grab if you want to while we were passing it. That's where we're going to now. And then we're going to go ahead and go to the next area with the dragons, I think. Very soon. We're going there very soon. And maybe a couple more collectibles we get before that. But yeah, we are going there real soon. Within the next one or two. Going to have some drow here to fight. Beat all them. Beat all of them up. Easy. Let's go ahead and go up there. Okay. So the marker is just at the end of this platform. Right there. Anything interesting, brother? And... Right now is where you'll see the dog barking like to go ahead to and come this way. I think this is the only place in the game that you get to use Freya's boat. I feel like they could have added this in in a few more sections, but yeah, this is the only place where you can use it. And when you right. hop on yes. the boat, you'll get a cutscene. Yes. And then you'll end up here. And following this little path here will pretty much bring you into the area. Again, you'll probably get a cutscene when you enter this section in a moment. A little bit of hack silver. Just something to mention, this area has a ton of hack silver. Like an absolute ton of it. Also, the red chests are full of very good resources. So if you see red chests in this area, open them because you will get a ton of stuff. So this is kind of like our, st uh, our starting point. And before we can continue and start doing collectibles in this area, there's probably some stuff you can grab. But as we're working section by section, before we can complete sections, we need to go and change the time of day. We need it to be nighttime, and it's currently daytime. So we're going to come along this way, and we're basically making our way towards the shop that's in this area. And we can hop across here, jump this gap, and let's go up. Yeah, I just want to show you guys how to get to the shrine, because it's kind of blocked off at the moment. You might have some enemies that you need to fight when you enter these areas for the first time, so look out for that. The dragon might also drop down and harass you, so just be careful. So when we've done this, you can kick down the shield that blocks that area, and that will allow you to get up there. So destroy this rock barricade by chucking a couple of spears in there, and then come up here. Just ignore the dragon. Keep running. We're going to come down here. And then we're going to hop across this gap. And come over here. Keep moving, keep moving. And let's hop up this ledge. And move around. And this will take us to the shrine. On your left is where you can look down and see the barricade that we just chucked a couple of uh, spears into and you'll need to chuck the other one in right there and then you can destroy that barricade it just kind of makes it easier to get back to this point and also unlocks a little area over there that we'll go and work on in a little bit but get that destroyed now and let's go ahead and turn the time to night time so that we can access the first area that we're going to which is the jungle 
know, when you first come here, you won't be able to get there unless it's night time. And we need to work on the jungle first because we need to flood the area in this section to make a lot of the sections accessible. At the moment, you won't be able to get to them. So let's go ahead and jump down here and we're going to go ahead and get the first collectible in the jungle. We're going to need to come this way, though, hop up this ledge. Um, yeah, it can be a little bit confusing at first, but I wanted to make it Again, easy to follow. I could have just said go and make it nighttime and head into the jungle, but I wanted to include how to, you know, get that done. Okay. Defeat any enemies along the way. Yeah, that sort of barricade that we just ran through there. It's kind of like an orange barricade. Kind of looks like pieces of wood, but that'll be blocked off in the daytime. Which is why you need it to be nighttime. What became of the river? Odin dammed it up. Without the water, the Vanir were forced to abandon the river. Once again, Odin won a battle without too much of a water. Between the droughts and the dragons, it's a wonder there's any life left here. It's down! Right, so after defeating the enemies, come through here, you're gonna have to destroy the poison plant. And there's more plants there. Let's get rid of them shimmy across this ledge and then you can climb down I'm pretty sure or up something rather large broke through here stay alert <clears throat> all right down we go following this path then and there's the artifact I think watch out for the plant obviously that a poem Never heard of this one. Sweet. All right. Heading forward then to law marker number 13. This one's called Unforgiven. Goes to show how many collectibles are actually in this area of Vanaheim. Down we go. You can avoid dealing with the dragon. Yeah. Oh, we could just run away because we're focusing on collectibles. So, more enemies. Get rid of them. Loads of fun. Then you can climb up here. Kind of quite a bit of running we've got to do to start getting into the area of the jungle. Let's go investigate, shall we? Bloody Odin. We could likely reach the other side of this canyon if there was still water running through it. All right, let's go. All right, hop up here. All right, destroy them plants, then we can go up using this lift. If we could release the water from the dam, it would gain us access to more of the crater. And it saves the wildlife. I was about to mention that. Of course. Sisters and brothers. Where were they? Vanir priests and priestesses. Like your friend by the river. These occultists resorted to say their magic to fight back against the Aesir. Had I been present, I could have... Okay. So, when you're in this area, you're going to have to break open this sneaky little tunnel that's behind these barrels by chucking the spear at the wall. Kind of hard to see that if you don't break the barrels. Okay. Well, through we go. The native wildlife stands no chance for its life. We must follow it. Okay. Get rid of the enemies that are in this area. You've got someone or a spirit to talk to here to pick up this favor. Speak. Lots of these spirits to talk to in the jungle and the surrounding areas. 
Can she? Remember. Then we go. Alright. So go ahead and use the runic arrows to burn away the bushes here. There you go. Surely that's unjammed the wheel. Yep, yep. I'm gonna spin the wheel. Sorted. So, we're working towards doing the first part of the dragon hunt favor. You need to chuck a spear right here so that you can jump across the gap with it. Just keep going. Get yourself that health stone. Hop across here. And you've got another chest right there. Again, like I mentioned before, these red chests have a lot of hack silver and also really good resources. So coming down here will summon the Drekki and you'll be able to beat it up to finish the first part of this favor. Get him beat and that will work towards getting Dragon Hunt. I'd say this jungle is well on its way back to its original glory. No reason to stop now. Okay, so next up we'll finish up the return of the river. And all you really need to do is get the the water flowing and then leave. And then you'll uh, complete this favor. Get that sorted. Head back. Over here, the water flows. The water. I never thought we'd bring life back to these parched canyons. We may access more of the crater, but more importantly, life will return. You've done something good today, Kratos. Water flowing and new paths open to us. I say we go for a stroll. We will search, not stroll. Oh, come off it. You've never enjoyed nature for its own sake? Not just for the treasure you might find? In fact, some would say the landscape is the treasure. Yes, some would. Looks like our good deed has already brought back some wildlife. All right, so... Yeah, that'll get that Return of the River sorted. And we're going to go and get another favor started, which is Casualty of War, the toy. If you see those orange crystals around that you just saw me break one of, make sure you break them and take the crystals. There must be a way up. You'll see me break plenty of them along the way, but just look out for them and break them. Got some enemies here to beat. Get them killed. There's also another mystic gateway there if you want it. <clears throat> so there's the dock that we just came from right there on the right. And here's the favor that we're going to pick up. Just to the side of that. What is it you want? Are you a father? Yes. Then you must understand. His story is like many in this valley, separated from someone they love by death. I do not wish a lost son on anyone, living or dead. Agreed. You do? Oh, I assumed you'd say something like. Reuniting the dead is pointless. Not this time. Alright. Moving on then. Going to get this legendary chest. And we're going to need to use runic arrows to burn away the bushes here on the roof. So many collectibles. Let's get that burnt away. And we can hop across these gaps easily now. And there's the chest. Sorted. Very nice. That'll give us a light runic attack for the spear. 
All right, hopping across this gap then. And you can see the switches that you need to turn to open the Nornia chest. There's one of them. And there's another one. I think next to the chest. Also, I've got to get this one. Let's use the runic arrows to burn away the bushes. Let's do it. Sorted. Easy. Okay, so one more to get. And I think it's just over here. Yeah, next to the chest. There we go. These are getting a little more complicated now, but that's fine. Easy chests. Alright. Okay, so moving on to the next raven. We have got this sorted. So many collectibles in Vanaheim. This is by far the biggest area by like another hour. I think there's something like a hundred and hundred and fifty collectibles or something like that in this area. Absolutely insane. Close to that amount anyway, it's somewhere around there. Alright. More celestial do if you want to grab it. Again, those don't count towards completion. You don't have to get them for trophies. But, you know, they bring up your stats a little bit, so for future fights, it, every little helps, you know? Pretty sure that'll count towards leveling you up on the stats. All right, so we're coming around here. Docking up. You can hear the knocking in the distance. Their songs are really annoying to listen to. Alright. So, when you're dealing with this fight, the dragon will swoop in and steal the ogre. That was ours, you opportunistic sword. It's returned to its perch. Let's pursue it. And there's the raven, just above that red chest. Easy. Alright, so here you can pick up another favor, or finish a favor, but you'll get to talk to the spirit again. Be with your son now. Thank you. I can't wait to see his face again. I'll give him this gift and tell him about the brave people who helped me. Now you can help us. What did you see that day? I remember walking into a meat hall, and Thor was there. What was he doing in the meat hall? There were whispers that he was looking for a van near military outpost. I didn't want any trouble, so I got out quick. That's the last I saw of them. But maybe there are others who saw more. Okay. Moving on then. Nice and easy does it. <laughs> Alright, so uh, going back towards the dock. And this is for Dragon Hunt number two. Trail of the Dead. There's a bunch of different dragons you're going to have to fight in this area. Although there are more. I think there's one in um, Svartalfheim as well. There's a way to fight a dragon there. Though I haven't figured out exactly how yet. I think I saw a vi someone posted a video about how to do it though. So I could look it up if I wanted to. Although it doesn't count towards completion. There's a bunch of just little secrets in this game. Which is really cool. I like when games add things that you don't need to do, but are just awesome in general to do. So we've got about another hour or so of this realm to do. If you are sticking with these guides and you followed them through, or you just if you're watching this in the future and this is my 100% guide where I've just shown all the collectibles in one video, I do appreciate you. Thank you very much. Also, if you watched my previous guide, I know that video did pretty well. Um, I appreciate that also. Thank you for following through and coming to this guide as well. 
Uh, the format has changed a little bit, but hopefully you still get all your collectibles. Problem is, there's a bunch of games coming out at once at the moment, and this one is so big, it's kind of delaying me from doing other things at the moment. Uh, the Devil in Me has recently released, and I'm trying to make guides for that too, but I haven't really had the time because I, I want to get this guide finished before I do that. Right, so you'll have a fight with this guy. It is done. Beat him up. I'll see. That ogre's not getting up anytime soon either. With the dragon dead, the wildlife will return. Nature has been set to rights. Yeah, but I've actually got around three or four guides on the back burner at the moment that I'm trying to sort out and get done. Usually it would not take me this long to get guides completed, but this one is really taking up a lot of my time just because of how big it is. So I've really um, pushed hard to get this guide finished. I mean, I've been working nonstop on it pretty much since the game came out. And it's rough because, you know, a lot of other people who make these kind of guides, they get the game before it releases. And that's not easy to do, you know. Um, gaining contacts from people who can help you with that is really difficult. So I just got the game when it released. And, uh, you know, well, just doing my best to get things done as fast as I can. Getting review copies of games isn't the easiest thing to do. It would be nice, but... You know, it's not uh, not always possible. But I'm not one to win. So you just got to work at these things. And eventually the success will come. That's a big problem with YouTube these days. A lot of people aren't willing to put the time in. You know, because just like with anything in life, it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of time. You gotta work your way towards something before you'll get anywhere with it. Put in that time, put in that time. And eventually you'll get to where you wanna be. And I love, I do enjoy making guides for games. For, I mean, for, for most games, it's really not too difficult. Doesn't really take a huge amount of time to do a guide for a game, but when the game's bigger like this, it takes a lot more time. But uh, yeah, now I'm done with it, which I'm really happy with. I've just got to commentate a few of the videos, put them together and get them on YouTube for everybody. Obviously, we've had a platform change. We've moved from PS4 to PS5. Things used to be a little bit easier with the PS4 because a lot of the games, especially like when this game came out, it was, I think I was playing it in 30 frames per second, 1080p. But with the PS5, I've moved up to 4K, 60 frames per second, which is a crazy jump in uh, video format and um, most people don't really bother <laughs> most people don't really bother with recording footage and putting stuff on YouTube and stuff like that but uh, editing softwares can become a lot more well your computer can struggle to process videos when they're higher resolution and higher frame rates a nice change of pace helping these stags get home. For a moment, I was worried we'd have to kill them. Yes. <laughs> you planned to kill it if it had attacked, didn't you? Yes. Of course he did. I'm just thankful that I've got a PS5, to be honest, because what has this thing been out? I think it's been out for like two years now or something like that, and they're still difficult to get. Like, they're still very difficult to get a hold of in the UK. It's actually insane that these consoles still aren't releasing at the pace people want them to. I'm pretty sure Xboxes are in abundance, but not the PlayStation. So this is where those tracks lie. This game was literally the main reason of why I wanted a uh, a PS5. But I'm thankful to have one. Anyway. Moving on, we're on to legendary chest number 12. This will give you a jewel of Yggdrasil. I think these count towards uh, getting another slot in the amulet, I think. So for this one, we need to trap some uh, enemies in that thing that we just chucked the axe into. We need to trap them in there so that we can bait the drake. Uh... So yeah, let's go ahead, 
take a look at that in a minute. Got a rune read here before we do that, though. Easy. Okay, so this is Dragon Hunt number three. And we're going to need to open up this door. And then we'll have a couple of enemies out here. Don't kill the enemies. Could be something in there. Could also Just get their attention. You know, this is my body. If I can see the bright side, surely you can too. And bring them back here. And then when you get them into the trap over here, hopefully Freya doesn't kill them. Bring them over here. And then recall your axe. You only need to get one in the trap. It's a good idea to try and get both of them in here and then try and trap them just so you can make sure you at least get one. There we go. We got one in there, that's good enough. You can kill the other enemy if you want to. And then pull the chain. And that will bait the trap for you. Sorted. Effective and unpleasant. Let us return to the dragon's den. Yeah, so now we need to go back to fight the dragon, or I think it's a drake that's around there, but it's good enough. It counts towards the dragon hunt, so I'll take it. So back over here, then back to the boat. Kind of a bit of a run around to get this one done, but it's no bother. We'll get it sorted. All the way around this way. Back where we came from to that dock, I think. Just need to follow the path back around. Yeah, even this first area in this top section of Vanaheim is big. The jungle just takes a long time to get through. It's crazy how much detail they put into these three or four realms. And the others didn't really have a lot. All right, so we're going to go along here. Let's go. Yeah, Niflheim, uh, Helheim. What are the other ones? And I think Jotunheim. Didn't really get a lot of love when it comes to collectibles. There are legendary chests that you can get there as Atreus, but they don't count towards completion. Um... But yeah, they don't have many collectibles at all. Whereas Vanaheim, Alfheim, Svartalfheim, and uh, Midgard all have a ton of collectibles. But they're also areas that you spend a lot of time uh, in the game. In You spend a lot of time there. And Atreus spends more time in Helheim and Jotunheim. But his collectibles, anything you can pick up as Atreus, just don't count as collectibles, which is kind of weird. It's also annoying because Atreus has some really good summons um, that Freya just can't get once you beat the game and don't have Atreus anymore, which is kind of crazy. I have an inkling, though, that the next game is going to be based around Atreus. All right, so we got to beat the Slaghorn, you slag. And that's how you get this favor done. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if they'll make any more games with Kratos, to be honest. Would be really cool if they remade, like, the original God of War. I know they've done, like, HD remasters of the game or whatever, but actual remaking them from the ground up would be so cool. But I don't know if they will. I really don't think they will, to be honest. But anyway, yeah, I think the next game might be about... Atreus. Anyway, we're on the sinkholes now. We went back to the first uh, mystic gateway that you unlocked. When you when you enter this area of Vanaheim, you're looking at the big lightning bolt that's frozen. We started from there and just came over to the right to the sinkholes. You'll also fight the untamed fury here. This boss shows up a couple of times. Once you do some damage to her, she'll leave. But they kill just to kill. You would have never wanted that. No. There is purpose here, even if you do not see it. 
Yeah, that boss doesn't count towards completion, um, but she shows up a couple of times. I haven't actually beaten her, but when you're in certain areas getting collectibles, she'll show up. I'm not sure what exactly happens when you beat her, but yeah, we have got to beat her. All right. There was never a natural tremor like that. Something is causing this. Okay, so use the runic arrows, arrows to light the little fire, uh, the fires here. Get those lit. Hopefully that's good enough. A bit finicky there, but we managed to get it. There we go. And the next one is over here. Let's hop up. And, yeah, that one's just there. Okay. There we go. Use those arrows. Get that lit. So it. Beautiful. And the other one is just below us. Yeah, I'll be uh, curious to see what they do next. It's probably going to be a game about Atreus, though, that doesn't have anything to do with Kratos. I don't know where I'm going here. We just led that one. Yeah. <laughs> kind of get a little bit confused, I think, about where to go. But, yeah, use those arrows again to light this up. Should be a relatively easy one to do. I wonder what they'll do with him, because he's kind of got to go and uh, mess around with the giants and putting their souls into things. There's the whole little bit of storyline about what he's doing with the world serpent and the fact that he put the giant spirit into that snake and that snake became the world serpent and then Thor sent that snake back in time or something like that. And that kind of means that that snake is on some sort of infinite loop or something. Found the time freeze glitch or something. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. But Good thing you the rooms, something more going on. All right. Finally be left alone. So we got another seasonal stag in this area. Next to this mystic gateway, I think. Yeah, there it is. I do not like you. I get that a lot. Two down, halfway there. All right. So that's that sorted. Then we're going to go up and do this favor of the burning skies, I think. Yeah, but you can kind of tell that's what they're doing with this game. They're playing Atreus up a bunch. They've given, like, a lot of his own combat, combat where you play without Kratos and kind of had his own small story arc that they're explaining a little bit that plays into this storyline, but also sets him up for his own storyline. That guy got speared right in the face. So we need to use the spear here to knock the dragon off the perch. And then we can continue in this area. Dragon just wants to harass us though. So do that twice. There we go. I'm gonna set on fire a bit, but that's fine. No, we got plenty of health. There we go, that starts the favor. The burning skies. And we'll come back around and finish that soon. Or maybe we do it straight away, I don't quite remember. Oh, we gotta open up this gate, so let's come over here and use the chain. Yeah, I do wonder what they'll do, or if they'll include Kratos at all, to be honest, though. I, I kind of don't want games for Atreus. I would like more Kratos. Although I don't think it's going to happen for a long time. Pretty sure they're ending Kratos' story right now. 
I'm not sure where they would go next. They've done, you know, five a hold up. Another spirit displaced by the Aesir. They've done Greek gods and Norse gods. That's why he sent Thor here. And what of Fey? Did she challenge Thor? Challenge Odin? Who knows? But the truth is waiting for us, brother. But it's also, you know... We walked everywhere. A different situation now, isn't it? Where... Essentially... In the previous God of War series, Kratos was taking on Zeus and the Greek gods and at the end of it when he was done he was kind of left displaced wasn't he he had achieved sort of his vengeance but he disappeared and it was kind of a bit of I think it was a little bit of a question mark whether he was dead or not am I not always careful with you oh yeah always the lightest touch whatever destroyed this tunnel it must be big no matter the size Every creature has a weakness. True. All right, so quiet all of a sudden. Let's do this dragon hunt. I'll continue with what I was saying in a minute. We should have anticipated such a beast in this valley. I never thought I'd live to see drakes in Vanaheim. I just hope this means an end to all the shaking. Maybe by the time we're done in this valley, it won't be such a bad place. And with that... All right. So, we've got artifact number eight, I think. It's another Kavassia poem. But yeah, in this game, it's kind of different. Kratos has a happy ending, and Odin kind of pointed that out in the storyline. He sort of said that nobody's ever worshipped you. And I think that's kind of what the deal is now. Like, he's sort of pictured as the savior, savior, I guess. That's kind of what you see at the end of the game as well in that one Yatnar shrine. You see, like, an image of him being sort of worshipped. It's pretty cool. He's essentially, like, the top dog now, I guess. And the gods that are left have some sort of respect for him, like, obviously Freya. You wouldn't expect that to happen after the events of the previous game, but, you know. So, yeah, picking up these shards doesn't count towards collectibles, but you get a set of armor uh, that's really cool at the end of this section, so it's... And you also get a ton of resources, so it's a good idea to smash those crystals open and get the shard... Uh, the crystals that are inside. And you are literally right next to the area where you'll get all of that stuff when we finish doing this guide. I'll explain it and show it to you, because I did it myself. Um, but yeah, you get a ton of resources from it, and also it's... Some of the stuff you get towards upgrading the armor to its highest level. So you want to make sure that you get in those shards. But yeah, I'll be interested to see where they go next. I do think because they've warmed us up to Atreus so much, they've like introduced his combat into the game. And his combat towards the end of the game did get very fun. I feel like his combat was cool. It's kind of sad that he doesn't have Ingrid, though. Like, Ingrid stayed with Freya. And he doesn't have it. Because I feel like Ingrid was a real nice addition to his combat. But, oh well. Maybe it was a little bit too OP. I think that is where they're going to go next, though. What they could do is make it so that they give Atreus a game, and then at the end he's in some sort of trouble. And then the next game is Kratos coming to save Atreus and some to some value, I guess. But I'm curious as to who exactly they're going to have as the antagonist in that um, sort of scenario. I guess there are other Norse gods that they haven't dealt with, perhaps. But, you know, there's a lot of them that have been a vengeful taken out, especially the big boy, you know, which is Odin. So right here, we've got a Berserker Gravestone. So we have done the majority of these 
gravestones now. Well, you have to beat them all in order to beat the king. Once we have defeated these berserkers, what then? We pay the king a visit and give him more of the same. We have seen this before. Revenge will not bring you peace. Is it revenge if justice is served? That is a question you must answer for yourself. I do think, though, that uh, in the previous game, the Valkyries were much tougher. The Valkyries were much, much harder to deal with. And in this game, the Berserkers, I guess, kind of replace the Valkyries. You do have one Valkyrie fight in this game. Um, but by the time I got to that fight, I was fully ranked up and she really wasn't difficult to fight at all. The Valkyries in the previous game felt really difficult, though. They were actually very, very hard fights. Especially the final boss fight, like fighting Sigrun, was so difficult. Star blush. So there's the flower in this realm for the Nine Realms in Bloom trophy. Working towards that. Okay. Let's move on. Heading towards getting another raven then. Wish I got some health stone there if you want it. Where are we going then? I think we've got to go and open this gate. This area took me so long to edit out. If you can imagine how long it would take to, you know... Just record all of this stuff. If you're following this guide, you know how long it takes to come along and just get all of this stuff. If you can imagine doing your best to record this stuff and show it accurately so you're always showing the map and trying to take straight line routes so you're not getting confused and going the wrong way, even though that does happen a couple of times in my video, don't get me wrong, but you know, doing your best to make the route you're taking concise and easy to follow... And then once you've got it all recorded, you've got to come back and edit it all together. So you're moving point to point and doing it efficiently. And then you've got to label it all. That takes a very long time as well. You're taking out all the stuff you don't need. And then you're going ahead and commentating it. So you pretty much just have to watch the entire video you've created back. And then you have to render it, which takes a lot of time. I'm lucky, but my PC is relatively powerful, so... If I'm rendering a video, it'll take a little bit longer than the video actually is to render. These days, I'm trying to render more videos in 4K. That's kind of a thing I'm moving into these days. Doing 4K videos, even though most people don't watch stuff in 4K. Some people do, but I know that everybody doesn't. Um... This video won't be in 4K. It is recorded in 4K, but I'll just release it in probably 2K, like 1440p, because it's just a collectible video. As long as you can see the video clearly, it's fine. Having the beefiest, best quality isn't too important. So when you come into this area, you're going to have the dragon breathing fire on you at the end of the tunnels, and you'll see that I was getting absolutely railed by the dragon while I was trying to do this. But you need to use the spear to break this wall. Don't think they're actually in the right place. Which is unfortunate. And you have to deal with the enemies whilst getting fire breathed on you. Which is very difficult. So you've got this little sort of alcove you can stand in and deal with the enemies and whatnot. Yeah. You'll know when you chuck in the spear in the right place because the stone will turn red. Again, that isn't in the right place. Very frustrating. Yeah, I'm getting beat up by this dragon. There we go. Alright, so detonate that. And you'll be able to go through. I think just beating this game casually, though, probably took me... 20 odd hours? 20, 30 hours or something like that? Which is really good for a... Um, just a first time play for like a length of a game. I did do some side stuff. I did some adventuring and whatnot. And if you're the kind of person who enjoys watching me play games casually, I know I used to do that a lot more on my YouTube channel. I kind of do that on Twitch these days. I stream it. I live stream it. And even if you're the kind of person who can't make the live streams... 
I uh, do. There are videos on Twitch as well. Like the videos do get stored, so if you want to go and watch the videos back, you can do. But yeah, man, if you want to show some support to me, there's numerous ways to do it over here on YouTube. Obviously, just liking the video, subscribing, all that good stuff. Um, nowadays, you have memberships, so you can pay for a monthly subscription on YouTube if you want to, to sort of support any creator you want, more or less. I think I have that enabled. You can also tip on YouTube these days. Not many people know about that, though. If you look underneath somebody's video, there's a little heart symbol, and you can actually just give someone payments if you want to these days. I also have a Discord. But yeah, I stream as well at twitch.tv slash iframes if you just want to come and... You know, it's not all about monetary. Just want to come and hang out. But yeah, man, if you do any of that stuff, obviously it's very much appreciated. But if you're just here watching, that's also very much appreciated. Like if, if you don't have the time to sit around watching people play games, just a like and subscription, which is all free, you know, I do very much appreciate that. And it helps spread the video out there. I think I know who this huntress is, but the Aesir called up the Untamed Fury. Must have been after my time. Vanier refugees, families, hid in this jungle to escape the Aesir. Ain't here yar search, but it was the untamed fury who found them, picking them off night after night until they were all dead. Rachel is the wrong jungle, and her retreat is strategic. Right. There we go. Sword. So now that we've done that, we can climb up here. The routes we have to take to get to some of these dragon fights are insane. They are really, really long. But we're getting there. We're doing well. We've got around another 35 minutes left of this video or so. Let's go ahead and beat this dragon now that we're up here then. Another one of these dragon fights. This is dragon hunt number five. Sorted. Well, this one's done. Got a ways to go before this crater's cleared out. On the subject of dragon. <sighs> Birger is still being harassed by one. Shouldn't we see to that? We're working on it, Freya. Relax. We will get there. Right. Back to this starting area then at the Mystic Gateway. It's a good place to start when doing these areas just because this area is very big and getting back to the beginning is kind of tough. This is the area of the Plains. And we're going over to this favor, which is the Casualties of War. The Brooch? The Brooch? I think it's spelled the Brooch, but I don't know what that is. So pick that one up. It is a brooch. I swear they spell it brooch, though. I might be wrong. So, to get this, we're going to need to beat uh, the Oath Guard. And we get a hilt for doing this. This is one of the ones you can find. And I'm pretty sure it needs to be nighttime before we can go and do this one. And because we did this earlier, we can just hop up and get to the altar nice and easy. If you're following along with me, it should be daytime for you at the moment. The dragon might drop in here and try and harass you a little bit, but we'll sort that out. You can just leave and it'll leave you alone. We'll get to him eventually. Got about half an hour left of this video now. Or of this realm. Depends on the video you're watching. You might be watching the one for this section. You might be watching the one that covers all the collectibles in the game. But yeah. Moving on to the uh, Oath Guard. After turning this to nighttime, we need to hop up here. 
Like I said, you need to kill two of these to get this hilt, and that's required for the collector trophy. There's a couple of favors I'm running past here. Don't worry, we'll come back and sort those out. It's kind of easier for me with the labeling as well. Like, if I'm working on one thing, and then all of a sudden I activate another favor, and you know, I have to change the label every two seconds, it's just best to focus on one thing at a time. There will be areas where I'm just like running past stuff. If you want to pick that up as you run past it, that's up to you, but we will come back and get it at some point, so don't worry. More than likely, though, you've probably picked that up if you've ran past it. But we'll be back for it, don't worry. So now that it's night time, we're coming over here to this dock. Bit of hack silver here if you want it. Like I mentioned, this area gives you a lot of hack silver. Like an absolute ton. Even the little chests give you lots. Hop across this gap then. And here's the oath guard. We're going to have to beat this guy up. Once you beat him, that'll count towards getting the hilt. He also drops a jo uh, journal. I think that counts towards getting the hilt. Another one of these crystals nearby as well. Basically just pick the loot up off the oath guard. Make sure you grab it. So next up we've got another Yggdrasil rift. Let's go get that sorted. So leaving that area. And heading back to the boat. I think there's a little island around here yeah, that has the Yggdrasil rift on it. We just saw Freya instant transmission instant transmission to the boat. You see her do that sometimes. Okay. So now that we're back here, let's go ahead and dock up. Yeah. And there's the rift. Second one in Vanaheim. Beat the enemies that pop out. And reach into the rift to get it completed. Sorted. Alright, so now that you've done that, there is a... A scroll, I think, around here. No, it's a treasure map here. There's a treasure map on this area. A scar is born. Easy. Okay. So next up we've got Dragon Hunt number six in the dead of night. Still in the plains. There are a bunch of Dragon Hunts in this area. Like I said, I could have broken this into two sections if I wanted to. Because this top half is pretty much like another realm on its own. But I wanted to keep it... Just get the full realm in there, you know? Keep it realm by realm. Except for the final few realms that we'll be doing. The next realm we will be covering, I think, is... Um, Midgard. If you follow in this guide along, we'll do this one and then we'll do Midgard and then okay? Muspelheim. Still dead, but I appreciate the concern. And there we go. There's that dragon hunt done in the dead of night. Got one of those crystals behind you if you want to get that also. Next up, we've got a favor, which is the, the stun, I think. Yeah, my preview is a little fuzzy. Like I mentioned before, I have to downgrade the quality I'm watching in so that it plays back smoothly in my editing software. Alright, so Raven 11 in Vanaheim. Let's get that sorted. Very nice. Okay, so next up we've got a law marker. Number 15. We're going to need to open up this gate for that. Here we go. Hop up the ledge here and head around this way. Hop up this ledge. Okay. So we've got, I think, some enemies to deal with before we get this one. Dragon's going to come and interrupt us. 
But just keep running and you'll be fine. Alright, let's go. Heading over here to the right then. I think I had to edit this section a little bit because I messed up the route and pretty much had to double back on myself, but you guys shouldn't see that. It should be fine in the video. We're basically going back around the way we just came from, but that's because once you drop down the ledge that we did, you can't get back up to here, so you have to come back around to get to you. So yeah, we need to hop up now on our left up here. Kind of a difficult ledge to see, to be honest. But yeah, you need to actually look to your left to get up there. There we go, yeah. Sorted. And then we've got this rope. Okay. So we're going to have to kill the enemies in this area by freezing up the poison things. And the lore marker is just in the back corner. So there's a very loud troll in this area. Super annoying to listen to after a while. Okay. Not too much left to do now, like another 20 minutes or something like that. Maybe a little bit more. Kick down the shield here and then you can drop down and then you've got an easier way to get back up here. All right, now we're going to do this favor. Dragons do not leave marks like these. Stay on guard. That's the mark of a soul eater. Ooh, soul eater. Alright, let's keep a lookout for other kills. Soul eaters hide in plain sight. Alright. Another cue. It's a sign we're on the right trail. There's danger ahead. Soul eaters may look just like rocks, but are far more deadly. So, once you've looked at those. We can come back around here. Sorry for the noise that the troll's making at the moment. He's super annoying to listen to. Around here somewhere is a pile of suspicious rocks right there. Three racks at it and it'll wake up. So beat him and that'll get the favor completed. Easy enough. Again. Yeah, we don't actually get rid of that troll for a minute, so you can imagine how annoying it is me running around here and listening to this constantly. Obviously, what you're seeing in the video is a little bit shorter than what I had to listen to, so... The same noises on loop. And also, one of the most interesting conversations in the whole game is in this area where you learn about Fae. But, uh... Yeah, that's... Coming shortly. Go and get this law marker. We will deal with that troll eventually. I was so happy when I got rid of him. Making very annoying snorting noises. Watch out for the poison plants. Let's hop over here then. Dragon's back, but forget him. I'm going to come down here and get this law marker. We need to open up this gate. And to get in here, we need to freeze up the uh, post behind it. So chuck your axe at a rune that you've put on the wall and that'll freeze the post and you can get through. Defeat the enemies that are in this area. This area can be a bit awkward to fight in because of the poison posts. Um, but yeah, the law marker is just over here on to the left of the door when you enter, but the enemies will have to be taken out first before you can get that sorted. There it is. Apology. Alright. Okay, so next up we've got the Nornia chest that's in this area. Let's break all of these. Last one is behind the tree. You'll need to freeze up this poison post. There we go. Sorted. All right. Now that that's done, we're going to go and get the 12th Raven. Again, freeze up the post to leave. And the Raven is just down there. 
Easy. All right, so let's go and finish up the casualties of war favor, the scroll. Hop across these gaps. Got another one of these crystals. Again, make sure you're collecting these. You get nice rewards for getting them. Nothing to do with 100% or collectibles, but it's a great way to get your armor fully upgraded. And if there's a particular armor, I think there is a, a trophy tied to 100% in a piece of armor, like getting an armor up all the way up to rank 9. And you don't have to do it with all of the armor, but the items you get from the crystals, and the only way to get them is by getting these crystals, is tied to getting some of the best armor ranked all the way up to level 9, so it pays to get those. What do you want, spirit, for a fight with the banner military? At the time this valley was destroyed? All right, there we go. I'm not sure, actually. Was that completing the favor or starting it? There's so many of these with the same name, it's kind of hard to tell. But we do get them all done. But what does the frozen lightning have to do with this conflict? There's only one way to find out, brother. We keep looking. Okay. So, hack silver out of the chest. You get really nice amounts of hack silver in this area, like I mentioned. And, yeah, if you were following the guide earlier, we'll have destroyed the barricade that's down there. If you... Um... Have maybe jumped ahead to get certain collectibles you might want to make sure you destroy that barrier when you're up there you'll have to throw a spear into the barrier that's here you'll have to throw two on this side and one from above where we just were so and then you can come down here and sort out this favor sorry about the troll again he's annoying to listen to i know Yeah, that conversation's really interesting. It's where you learn that Faye was here when she wielded the axe fighting against four. Kind of cool to know. Alright, so there's another Nornia chest. See, I think that's a legendary chest, but it's fine. We'll live with it for now. Okay, so Oath Guard number two. This guy is behind this door. I'll have to come in and maybe edit out that label so nobody gets confused as to what we're picking up. Label that as a Nornia chest and not as a legendary. So, like I mentioned earlier, you're going to have to fight two of these guys in order to get this next hilt. So make sure that uh, you kill these guys first and then you can deal with the oath guard and beating him will get you the hilt that you need. He carried some writing. Grab it, would you? Hmm, seems the travelers were told that by exploring the nine realms and beyond, they'd find a way into paradise. Told by whom? Someone calling themselves. There we go, there's that hilt I was talking about, the hilt of froth. All right, so leaving this area then, we're going to go and do the seventh dragon hunt. This one is the Crimson Dead. Let's go ahead and go through this crawl space. There he is. Sorted. Now, where's the That's it, we've done it. The creature is free of dragons. Maybe now it can finally begin to heal. It may take a long time. Okay, so now we can get the four Vanaheim favor done, which involves what is his name? Bjorg Bjorg or Biega, whatever his name is. The guy that jumps out of the boat in the storyline. That guy. Go ahead. Over here. Oh, saw that out. Thanks. We could say the same. You nearly sacrificed yourself for us. Did he not, Crater? Talk later. All right. Here we are then.
Okay. Moving on. So you're gonna need to come and bring him back to the gateway. See each other again. And under different circumstances, one hopes. And there we go. Sorted. That will complete the favor. Kind of cool that he survived. I think you just need to bring him back to any gateway, but that's the one that's right next to it. So I just went there. All right. So next up, we've got. Uh, a seasonal stag, which is actually right next to the gateway we were at. Sorted. Take a look at the map. All right, let's get on with it. So, let's go and get this Lindworm. I think the last Lindworms you collect are in this area. It's the same for the Stags as well. So when you're done with Vanaheim, you can go to Ratatoska and cash in the favors and get those complete. Got it. I'm back. Don't mind me. You are not my enemy. All right. So, next up we've got a raven. Let's go and get him sorted. Obviously we've got some crystals here. Like I said, make sure you're smashing these. You get good rewards. Alright. So, this raven's just down here. Easy. Okay. So... Now we can go and do a Draug hole. This is number two in Vanaheim. I'm not sure. I think this might be the last Draug hole we've got. Oh, no, there's one in Midgard. There's still one in Midgard. Ignore that. There's still more to do after this, but there is one here. Again, more of these crystals. Make sure you're grabbing these wherever you see them. Also, this little creature that's behind this door, if you stand back from it, you can only attack these from behind. They give really good loot if you kill them, so... You'll have to come this way to get him. You can't get him from the other side. But there we go. Decent loot. Luminous alloys are really good. Alright. So, heading along this way. I think this is one of the last areas we've got to complete in this section. Yeah, we've got about... 15 minutes, maybe a little bit less than that left to do. And I'll be glad to have this area recorded, just because it's such a long one. I had to sit here for around 2 hours and 45 minutes to get this one done, something like that, 2 hours 40. Let me know how long it takes you guys to go through and get all the collectibles if you're doing that. I'd be interested to know. It took me around, I think, 45, 50 hours or something. To get everything done in the game. There we go. I'm trying to remember which god raised our dander up. It does not matter. Doesn't it? If rage is all that remains, her reasons are irrelevant. Alright. Yeah, obviously I've had to play through the game twice. I did my casual playthrough and I just sort of enjoyed the game, you know, didn't really worry about what I was picking up and stuff. And because I want to make this guide, I have to play through the entire game without picking any collectibles up at all. Just so I can backtrack to all of the areas and get all of the collectibles, you know. It's it's kind of awkward if I've played through the main storyline and then I have to go and figure out what collectibles I found and which ones I haven't. Hi. It's high time we banish them from this valley. It's just kind of the way that you want to do these collectibles. Alright. Beautiful. Get that raven. 
got another Liam, uh, Leo, Law Marker up here. I have to defeat the enemies first. That's the last of the seed, I believe. The last of these cursed souls are There's the Law Marker. If there are more, we will be ready. What's it say, brother? Alright, we got another Yggdrasil Rift. Oh no, it's a uh, Lost Lindworm. Let's get him sorted. I think that's the last one we've got to collect. I believe that's the last of them. And that's the last of them. Spectacular work. Easy. So I'm burning off the brambles here. We're not actually going to do the chest that that relates to um, just yet. We're going to go and do this Oath Guard first. We'll come back to that in a minute, though, and we'll get that chest. All right. Let's keep moving, then. Hop up this ledge. Jump across here. Up we go. Alright, there's the Oath Guard. Let's go and get ahead and get rid of him. And get some spear handles off this guy. Alright. travelers to find a path into Jotunheim. They failed. Thankfully. But it seems they traipsed across all of creation in the attempt. Still, I suppose that's all of the assassins. Perhaps we should let Birger know. All right. Go ahead and talk to Birger if you want to. You're going to have to go back to camp to do that. We have brought you what you asked. Thank you. My love, she waits for me in full fun to this land. All right, so that's another favor completed. I've known Faye's anger, but never to this extent. We hide enough. She took part in the destruction of this valley. That would take a rage I thought her incapable of. Perhaps you and Faye had more in common than you thought. We both had secrets, but that kind of anger. I saw Faye in that night. Even the brightest among us carry darkness, brother. All right. So, let's go get this treasure map sorted. A scar is born. And this is over sort of near the sinkholes area, but it counts towards the plains. And it's just there. You're going to have to kill these wisps before you can do it. Get rid of them. Grab yourself your buried treasure. And if you're looking for the map, if you've skipped to this in the timestamps, then just take a look at the timestamp and next to it should be the map location. If you're worried about that, you won't be able to pick that up until you've picked the map up. So, all right. Let's go up here then. And next up, we've got this Nornia chest. And this is what we burnt those brambles away a second ago to get to. If you haven't done that, you'll just need to do that now. But they're just covering one of the switches. You'll see me in the switches. So let's come up. And over here, we can kick down the shield. Literally just a handful of collectibles to get now before we've 100%ed Vanheim. We have done... A lot of collectibles. Like I said, this game has about 500 of them. Right, so there's one of those switches. There's the other. And I think this one up here, you'll have to burn the brambles away. There's the third one. 
All right, there we go. Sorted. All right, so next up we've got the Nocturnal Predator favor. We're gonna have to go and interact with this. Is it a deal? Basically just need to run around and sort out the animals that are in this area. I was trying to be smart here and throw spears at the spire things before we fought the um, phantom. But yeah, you can't do it that way. The game just doesn't let you. Lesson learned, I guess. Yeah, I'm still trying to be smart here, but this doesn't work, so don't repeat my mistakes. Alright. So over here is the second animal that we've got to help out. Oh, the poor wildebeest didn't make it. It was too far gone. At least we spared it some pain in its final moments. Got an enemy here to deal with, where you can get this last wisp. Also got a chest here. It's a good idea to open all the chests that you see in this area, just because of how much hack silver you get out of it. Although, to be honest, by the end of this guide, if you're following along with me, you will have an absolute ton of hack silver. All right. So once you've done that and released the three animals from the wisps, you'll have to approach um, a one of these things in the middle. The ibex would not have survived much longer. He's plants, man. The wisps are contained. We, the wisps are all locked inside their springs. So I'll approach this and then walk away from it, and the phantom will spawn. Uh, and beat it up, and you'll get this favor completed. We've handled the wisp problem. I'd like to know how they managed to escape and form that creature, though. Chains only hold for so long. Eventually, those who wear them will break free, one way or another. You can say that again, brother. All right. We got a trophy there. Very nice. Okay. So now. Uh, we've got to go and get the next seasonal stag, which is the last one. All of them are in this area. So let's go and get this guy figured out. This is a little bit of a trek. The last two collectibles that we've got to get are pretty much in the same place. I mean, one of them is the stag and another one is one of the dwarven pages. This will be the third dwarven page that we've picked up. The fourth one is in uh, Midgard. And I think the other two... Are in actually I'm pretty sure there's one in Svartal Svart God I can't talk. There's one in Svartalfheim, one in Alfheim, one in Vanaheim, and one in Midgard. This place is already healing. So yeah, once you've got all of those dwarven pages, they will give you, I think, new relics. It's either relics or hilts. And to get the collector trophy, you're gonna need to go to the shop and craft those hilts. Make sure that you craft all of the shields and all of the relics you get, and that'll make sure that you get the collector. I, I will show myself doing that at the end of the of this guide, just so there's no confusion, and I'll show you what shields I've got, just in case you're missing any. Maybe you've only followed part of the guide or something. I see something. But yeah, you'll be able to figure out what you need. Lovely. Now you can open that gate without that ogre hurling detritus at it. Yeah, so we need to open up this gate. Sorted. Let's go through. Some little enemies to here to deal with. These guys are just kind of annoying, but you got to get rid of the nest. Okay, throw the spear in, and then we can jump up. 
Simple. Alright, so we're coming close to where we need to be to get this stag. Like I said, when you've collected all of the stags and also the lindworms, you're going to have to go back to Sindri's house to talk to Ratatoska, and then you can get um, his favors completed and get your trophies. I'm not sure if you get the trophies here, actually. You probably do. Yeah, there we go. A job well done. Might as well check in with Ratatoska when we've got the time. Easy trophies. All right. So next up, we've got this last dwarven page, which is just over here. This is also the area that you can purify the crystals that you've been finding along the way. Hopefully, you've got a bunch of them. But yeah, just over here, over that little jump, is where you can find the dwarven page. He saw that the Aesir would likely use his powerful weapons to cut down his fellow dwarves. So he ripped out his design pages and scattered them. And what of him? Well, the Allfather found out. He wasn't terribly pleased. All right. So, let's go and get some crystal rewards. So if you come all the way down here, you can chuck your crystals in, you'll get some armor. And you'll also get all of your crystals and you get a bunch of hack silver and stuff. Definitely worth doing. 100% worth doing. Um, here we go. Thanked us. What? This land is alive in ways others are not. It speaks its own language, one I understand. It wants to show its gratitude. Just toss a crystal in. All right. What is this? Armor and crystal shards. Gifts. Those crystals. They're a blight on the land. We'll be rewarded for any we can return to the poem. That's handy. Good thing we collected all those crystals in the first place, eh? So you get a bunch of good stuff here. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much the end of this video. I'm really glad I've got this video done because it's a very long one. But thank you for following to the end. If you have done, I appreciate that. The next section I will be covering is Midgard. Um, if you're watching the 100% video with all the collectibles, though, and we'll just be moving on very shortly. But get all your rewards from here. There's a bunch of crystals in this area as well if you want to go and get those and chuck those in. But again, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. Let me know in the comment section if the video has helped you out. All the uh, likes and subscriptions are greatly appreciated if you want to support me further. There's always uh, my live stream channel over at twitch.tv slash iframes. And also you can become a member if you want to. Join my Discord. All that good stuff really helps out. Thank you very, very much for watching. Have yourself a great day. And until next time, take it easy.